Dominic reached out and touched Angel's pizza sauce crusted hair. Not that you don't totally rock this Italian food in the hair look. Angel laughed. Dominic leaned toward her. Angel held her breath. Do you mind? Dominic said. I don't think pizza sauce is a good conditioner. And as a hair colour, well, this particular shade of red doesn't match the rest of your hair. Angel said nothing. She was trying to remember what she last ate. She hadn't eaten any of the pizza her mum and Myron ordered. But she did have some chocolate candy. Well, that shouldn't have given her bad breath. Dominic was dabbing at her hair and the skin of her jaw and neck with paper towels he'd sprayed with whatever was in the plastic bottle. Whatever it was smelled flowery, and it was warm. It felt soothing against the skin of her jaw and her ear, and he was being so gentle. Who was this guy? It seemed like he came from an entirely different planet than the guys at her school. They were oafs by comparison. None of the guys she knew at her school would know how to clean pizza sauce out of hair. Okay, that's better, Dominic said. He tucked a strand of hair behind his ear. Then he looked down at her jeans. He held out more wet towels. Think you can handle the rest? I don't want to be disrespectful. Angel laughed and took the towels. I appreciate that. She worked at the stain on her jeans. The deep red faded a little, but didn't disappear. She hoped it would come out in the wash. So, I assume you're here with your family, Dominic said, once Angel was cleaned up. Yeah, sort of. My stepsister is the birthday girl. Ah, so I did save you. Does she make you clean the fireplace and scrub the floor too, Cinderella? She would if she was old enough to care about that stuff. For now, her daddy, my stepdad, is the one on my case. Ah, yeah, that can suck. Yeah, it can. I haven't seen you before. What school do you go to? I'm graduating from Merrimount in a month. You? Same, graduating in a month, but from Graves Academy. Ooh, snazzy. Graves Academy was a private school for brainiacs. Angel was impressed in spite of herself. Yeah, right? Dominic gestured at his Freddy's vest and name tag. I know I can I know I make this Freddy's thing look good, but you should see me in my school uniform. It would knock your socks off. Angel looked down at her sandal clad feet. So did Dominic. See? Dominic said. Even thinking about me in my uniform knocked your socks off. Angel laughed even as she groaned. Dominic smiled. So how did you end up wearing our pizza instead of eating it? Please tell me a server didn't get this sloppy. No, not a server. Ophelia. Dominic raised an eyebrow. Hamlet's hapless lover? Yeah, right. See? I was just thinking about that. Why would you name a child Ophelia? I guess it's a pretty name, but it has some heavy connotations. And Ophelia is... my stepsister. Ah, the wicked stepsister. Out, out, damned spot. Angel laughed. I think you're suffering from Shakespearean confusion. Something wicked this way comes, Dominic said. Angel laughed harder. Better sentiment, but you're still in the wrong play. Ah, well, this above all, to thine our own self be true. Shakespearean is foreign language to me, honestly. <laughs> uh, ding, ding, ding. Give the man a prize, Angel said. He made his way back to Hamlet. They both giggled, and then they both spoke at once. Angel said, thank you for, just as Dominic said, listen, how about, they both stopped and grinned. Before either could finish a sentence, a woman's voice called out, Dominic. Angel and Dominic turned toward the voice. Another Freddy's employee, a thirsty something woman, a thirsty something, a thirty something woman, stood just outside the dining room. There you are, she said. The woman was tall and athletic looking, with brown hair caught up in a ponytail. She wore a Freddy's uniform, and she looked perfectly calm in spite of the chaos swirling around her. Dominic stood. Hey, Nancy, I'm coming. Meet me in the kitchen, Nancy said. Dominic turned and held out his hand. Angel took it. She was happy to have the chance to hold his hand again. I'm sorry to abandon you to all this. He waved his arms out. And your evil stepsister too, but duty calls. No problem. He smiled at her. Before my boss so rudely interrupted, I was about to ask if you might want to go out tomorrow night. There's an indie band playing at the Rocket House. Would you be game? Sure, I'd like that. Great. If you give me your number, I can pick you up. If you don't want to give me your number, you could just meet me there. Angel rattled off her home phone number. Dominic laughed. Okay then. 
He repeated the number back to her, and she nodded. You won't forget it? She asked when he didn't write it down. She wanted to kick herself because she sounded like a nag. He didn't seem to mind. I have a great memory. I won't forget it. Or you. Angel blushed. Dominic reached into the pocket of his uniform vest. And here, here's my Freddy's card. You can always call me. Angel took the card and stuck it in her jeans pocket. But you won't have to call me, Dominic said. I'll beat you to it. I'm going to be working here late tonight. Lots of clean-up to do and then prep for another party tomorrow. I'll call you later this evening to set up the time, Dominic said. Angel nodded. Are you heading back in? Dominic asked her. She shrugged, then nodded. I guess I have to. Dominic laughed and offered his arm. Then may I escort you to the pandemonium, <laughs> milady? Um, Angel laughed and took his arm. You may, Prince Charming. Dominic chuckled and let, and let her back into the dining room. He squeezed her hand briefly before letting go in the doorway. Until later, he said. She nodded. That was a very lovely scene. Um, Scott is getting a lot better. Oh, the, the writers of this are getting a lot better at writing these kind of scenes. The thing is, I feel like something is coming across that's making me think that Dominic is actually a bad guy. I don't know why. He's, 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 he's the baddie in this. He's the villain. Um... Where have you been? Myron demanded when Angel got back to her family's table. The band was getting ready for a sing-along. Angel glared at him. I had to go clean up the pizza sauce. Your klutzy daughter decided to smear all over me. Angel's mum leaned in. The snarky attitude isn't necessary. Ophelia is only five years old, Angel. Yeah, I know, and yet she's the head of the household. How does that make sense? Myron shook his head. The sing-along started and Angel noticed Dominic, who was now singing too, moving gracefully from table to table. His voice could be heard above the din of the kids' voices. He had a really nice voice. As she watched him singing with a trio of rambunctious boys, Angel wondered if Dominic wanted to be a performer. That was what she was going to be. Angel was going to be an actress, singer and dancer. She was equally talented at all three, truly. All the teachers in the drama and music department and her high school had told her she was really talented to make it into the, in the entertainment industry. They were the ones who'd encouraged her to apply to the performing arts school. She probably wouldn't have had the confidence to do it without her, their urging. Audiences are just going to eat you up, Angel, her favourite dra drama teacher had said when she'd given Angel the application. You're going to be special, unlike any other. When she'd applied to school, Angel had no idea how she was going to pay for it because Myron said he wasn't paying for some art school that you can't prepare that can't prepare you for the real world. She was thrilled that she qualified for loans. Angel watched Dominic dance a sort of modified rumba with a few little kids. Their faces shined with joy. It was strange. Earlier today, the same scene would have had ro uh, Angel rolling her eyes, but watching how good Dominic was with the kids. It made her see this place in a whole different light. Oh god, she's in love. <laughs> um, disgusting. Um, her mother poked Angel's arm. Why aren't you singing? You love to sing. Angel shrugged. Her mum had a point. Why not sing? So she sang. Not so loud, her mother said immediately. Angel stopped singing and crossed her arms. She tried to return to Dominic watching, but a group of kids were now dancing on chairs and they blocked her line of sight. Another eternity later, the singing stopped and finally the announcer made a big production of bringing Ophelia up on the stage to blow out candles on the gargantuan cake. Of course, Ophelia couldn't even manage her five candles. The animatronics helped her. Angel vaguely wondered how that worked. They must have had little blowers in their mouths. After Ophelia received claps, whistles and a standing ovation for blowing out two of her five candles, servers began cutting and passing out cake while the animatronics con continued performing. Angel slouched in her chair, watching the animatronics dance. She wished she could re-choreograph their routine. As soon as the cake had been doled out, microphone feedback pierced through the commotion, and the announcer called out, and now for the grand finale of today's festivities, may we have the birthday girl back on stage, please? Ophelia grinned and ran up to the stage. Everyone cheered again. Angel looked around the room until she spotted Dominic. He was talking to his boss at the edge of the dining room, but he saw her glancing his way. He winked at her. Angel smiled. 
Maybe things were looking up. It was, after all, only a month to graduation, and then she was going to stay with a friend in another state while they attended a summer-long acting workshop. Angel got a scholarship for it, and she had been saving up for travel and food expenses, which was all she needed since her friend wasn't going to charge her rent. Then after that, performing art school. Pretty soon she'd be living her own life, making her own choices, and she wouldn't have to take any more orders from Myron or play second fiddle to Ophelia. And now for the pièce de résistance, the announcers shouted. Lower away! The band played a loud fanfare, and something started coming down from the ceiling. Angel figured they were about to see a Freddy-shaped piñata or something. Piñatas seem to be popular at kids' birthday parties these days. Only half watching the thing get lowered down. Angel blinked and looked more carefully when she saw that the object wasn't a piñata. At least, it wasn't a piñata that looked like any she'd seen before. Sinking slowly down into the room, a sort of soft-looking statue was un undulating and quiver quivering its way closer and closer to the stage. The statue was vaguely girl-shaped, and it wasn't made of paper mache. It seemed to be made of... Was, was that candy? Angel leaned forward and squinted. Yeah, it looked like gummy candy. It was like a big gummy statue. Okay, that was different. Interested now, even as she was equally repelled, Angel watched the gummy statue throw out its arms, kick its legs, and gyrate its body. Clearly some form of animatronic like Freddy and its band members, the gummy statue was in constant motion. It flung itself this way and that. Weird, gross, maybe a little cool. Kids, the announcer called out, for your eating enjoyment we present to you the birthday gummy. The kids cheered. The announcer looked at Ophelia. You, my lovely young lady, as the birthday girl, have the privilege of taking the first bite of our yummy gummy. You will start with the yummy gummy's toes, and you will get the responsibility of having the last bite, the yummy gummy's gumdrop nose. The <laughs> Knowing this FNAF universe, this is probably going to be Fazgu. <laughs> it's going to be a Fazgu gummy bear, a massive Fazgu gummy bear, and, and she's just going to get annihilated in front of everyone. Ophelia laughed and clapped her hands. She started toward the gummy statue. The announcer held up a hand. Before you start, dear birthday girl, let me repeat to you all. Only the birthday girl can take the gumdrop nose. That is for Ophelia and only for Ophelia. Does everyone understand? The kids all chorused. Yes. Excellent, the announcer said. Now you may begin, Ophelia, and then kids, come on up and join her. You will all need to take bites to devour this yummy gummy. Ready, set, go! Ophelia ran over to the gummy statue and bit off its big toe. Even though it was made of candy, watching Ophelia eat the toe made Angel feel a little sick. She thought it was strange that the gummy statue kept moving even as the other kids filled the stage and began chewing their way up the statue's legs. Angel would have thought they would have turned off the animatronics before the thing got eaten. Bored again now that the gummy was being consumed by scrabbling children, Angel sat back and tapped her foot. For a few minutes, she watched the kids eat the candy, but then she started feeling queasy. The scene reminded her of the horrible nature shows Myron liked to watch, the ones where the lions ran down a, ze uh, a zebra. I, I say zebra in the UK, so... <laughs> a zebra and chowed down. Angel hated these shows. It's just nature, Angel, Myron would say to her when she objected. Quit being so squeamish. Nature or not, she didn't like seeing living things eaten. She didn't like seeing the lobsters in the tanks at restaurants. The gummy statue was just a little too lifelike to enjoy seeing it devoured by a horde of little kids' mouths. So by the time the kids were halfway up the leg, she had reached her into her purse and come up with a nail file. She started touching up her nails. Another several years passed and the announcer shouted, You're doing great, kids. Remember, the gumdrop knows... It's for Ophelia, and only Ophelia. Oh god. I, I bet there's something wrong with the gun drop nose. Because <laughs> um, they're putting emphasis on it. Angel glanced up to see the kids were at the neck. Only the statue's head was left. It had been lowered closer to the stage so the kids could reach it. Angel watched a pudgy kid tear off the head's ear with his little white teeth. Her stomach flip-flopped. She looked back down at her nails. 
She didn't look up again until the announcer shouted, Everyone stop! The kids froze. The head was almost gone. Ophelia, our birthday girl, come get your gumdrop nose, the announcer called. Angel looked up once more. She saw Ophelia sitting at the edge of the stage, looking like she might be sick. The announcer, unper unper unperturbed, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, danced over, pulled her to her feet and escorted her to the remains of the gummy statue. Take your gumdrop nose, the announcer said. Ophelia looked at the announcer, then reached out and plucked the nose from the nearly consumed head. She tugged on the announcer's leg and he bent over. She whispered something to him and he stood. Our birthday girl is going to take her gumdrop nose home to save her at a later time. Let's give her a big round of applause. For what? Angel wondered. Saving a gumdrop for later? Please. Angel shook her head and waited for the century that had been Ophelia's birthday party to come to an end. <laughs> they finally left Freddy's at around 6pm. Considering they'd left the house before noon, Angel decided it had to have been the longest birthday parties on record. The sun was still in the sky, reminding Angel how close they were to June and graduation, her ticket to freedom. The thought helped loosen some of her taut muscles. Angel got into the back seat of Myron's top-of-the-line minivan and strapped herself in while Myron helped Ophelia into her car seat. Ophelia said she was feeling bloopy because she ate too much of the gummy statue. She still hadn't eaten the gumdrop nose, though. It had been wrapped carefully in plastic for her. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong with it. Ophelia stank of sweat and garlic. I oh, know what's, what's going to happen is, Oph is Angel is going to eat it and then she's going to be a gumdrop angel, quite literally. And then everyone's going to eat her. Oh no. It's going to be like a tag, tag team thing. <laughs> uh, Ophelia's stank of sweat and garlic. Angel shrunk against her door and turned to look out the window. She pressed her nose against the warm glass and tried to breathe the sun's expansive rays through the glass instead of Ophelia's stench. Myron finished strapping in his precious daughter and then got in the driver's seat. Angel's mum was already in the passenger seat, the visor down, checking her makeup. Myron started the engine and then turned around to look at Ophelia. So are you ready for your big birthday surprise, sweetie? Angel swiveled to gawk at Myron. He had to be kidding. There was more than that extravagant birthday display they just endured. Ophelia, who had been about to nod off before Myron spoke, lifted her head and clapped her, hen her hands. Birthday surprise? What is it, Daddy? You'll have to wait and see, my princess. Ophelia bounced in her car seat. She grinned at Angel and asked, Do you know what my surprise is? Angel shook her head and turned toward the window again. She did her best to zone out as the minivan began moving. And she must have done a good job because the next thing she knew, Myron was shouting, Here we are! Ophelia let out an adult-sized snort and opened her eyes. Angel blinked and wiped her wet eyes. She, then she blinked again and wiped her eyes again. No. Really? Myron had pulled the minivan into a graveled area in front of a huge barn, next to a grassy paddock in which three lovely chestnut horses grazed. The evening sun caressed their backs, turning them golden. Horsies! Ophelia squealed. Oh, Daddy, are there ponies? I want a pony. I know, sweetie, Myron laughed. He got out of the minivan and opened the back door to unstrap his daughter. Come on, Angel, her mother said. Angel forced herself to open the minivan door. She had to command her feet to move. She did not want to see what was about to happen. She got out of the car and looked around. Myron, Ophelia and Angel's mum were heading toward the barn and they didn't seem to care she, wa she wasn't with them. So Angel turned in the opposite direction. She picked her way across the gravel, listening to her footsteps crunch and she approached the wood fence around the paddock. One of the horses, a mare, trotted over to see her, dropping her huge head over the top of the fence to nuzzle Angel's shoulder. The mare smelled like fresh hay and moist earth. She also smelt a little like manure. Or maybe that wasn't the horse. The paddock needed cleaning up. Angel laughed when the mare gave Angel an insistent shove with her nose. I don't have anything for you, she said. Do you want to give her an apple? Angel turned to see a red-headed red -headed girl coming the way. The girl's long hair was plaited into a braid and she was smiling. She wore denim overalls and she looked open and friendly. Hi, 
Angel said. Hi. The girl held out a slice of apple. Angel took it. Put it in your palm and hold your palm out flat and steady, the girl said. Angel did as she was instructed. The horse took the apple slice. Her lips felt warm and soft against Angel's palm. The puff of her breath tickled. Angel smiled. You're awesome, she told the horse. Thanks, the red-headed girl said. <laughs> Why was that so funny? Okay. I don't know why that made me laugh so much. Angel looked at her. Oh, you, you weren't talking to me? The girl laughed. I get that all the time. Next to the horses, I tend to disappear. Sorry, Angel said. My name's Angel. Tammy. You work here? Angel asked. Tammy nodded. This is my dad's place. That's my mum and stepdad over there, Angel said. Ophelia was getting a, a pony. Ophelia? Angel pointed. My stepsister. Oh, yeah. Sweet little girl, she's been out here a couple of times to ride the ponies, but today she's hitting the jackpot. Angel ignored the sweet little girl comment. What do you mean by the jackpot? Oh, I mean, Ophelia isn't just getting a pony. She's getting a pony and a horse. Her dad wants her to have the pony while she's still small, and he's bought a yearling for her too. She wants her to grow up with her horse, as and she's going to be getting private lessons all year long too. How much does that cost? Angel blurted. Sorry, that was rude. And you probably can't tell me. No, I get it. And I don't think there's any confidentiality in our business. At least, not this part of it. Now, if we were talking racehorses, that would be another coral, cor coral of fillies. What? <laughs> that's, that's a weird saying. Uh, Angel smiled. The pony is $2,000, Tammy said. The yearling is $3,000. Jesus Christ. Uh, but that's just the beginning. We charge a couple thousand a year to keep and take care of a po pony or a horse. So your stepdad will be spending about $4,000 a year on fees when the lessons will be $50 a day. So let's say she comes an average of three times a week, even for 50 weeks. That's what? Tammy looked upward, doing a math in her head. That's 7500 a year, Angel said. Yeah, Tammy said. So what did you get for your birthday this year? Angel laughed. <laughs> Dinner at a burger place, because that was where Ophelia wanted to go. I'm a vegetarian. Oh, that's rude. I know, right? But I also got a small cake and a new set of suitcases. You know, for when I leave home. Tammy barked out a laugh. Oh, sorry. That's so sad, it's funny. Tammy covered her mouth. I'm so sorry. Angel laughed too. It's alright. They say comedy is tragedy plus time. Tammy shook her head. I was feeling sorry for myself before I came over here to talk to you. See... I want to go in the, into culinary school, and my dad won't let me go until the fall because his foreman, because his foreman got injured, and I need to stay and help. I mean, once Ed, the foreman, is back, dad will pay for my school, and he's even getting me a car. Angel sighed. 